This is my perfect freestyle build, a five inch freestyle quadcopter made exactly how I want it with no compromises at all. And I first released the build video for this in 2020, and it's now 2022. And people are always asking me, whenever I release a build video, when are you gonna update it? Is there anything you'd change? And usually the answer is no. Once I find something that works for me, I stick with it. I enjoy just being able to fly my damn quadcopter instead of constantly chasing the latest and greatest stuff. But today is a little different. Today, I am changing things about this build. Some of the parts that I used have been updated, and there's new versions that I want to use. And some of the ideas that I had going into that build have changed a little bit. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Let's start with something that hasn't changed since 2020. My favorite frame at the time was the Lumineer QAVS. I worked with them to make a couple of changes to the frame to make it more durable, lighter, and fly better, and made the JB edition of the Lumineer QAVS. That's the frame that I used in the original 2020 build video, and it is still the frame that I am using today. So. That hasn't changed. But a whole lot of other things have changed. And I guess the most obvious one is going to be the motors. The original motor that I spec'd was the FPV Cycle 25mm Imperial. And this is, make no mistake, an exceptional, exceptional motor. But some of the test results that I've seen from, well, Chris Rosser mostly, some of the test results that I've seen from Chris Rosser show that, at least on the bench, they're just isn't an advantage to this larger motor when used with a five inch prop. That this motor is really, really good on like a 5.5 inch or a six inch prop where the additional torque that the larger motor volume makes can actually be used. But on a five inch prop, a smaller motor like a 2207 can make enough torque to accelerate that motor that the responsiveness of the prop is not improved by going to a larger motor and the 25 millimeter motor is significantly heavier than a 2306 or a 2207 motor. So the argument goes that we're adding uh, as much as maybe six or seven grams per motor by going with the Imperials to no real benefit, at least in the bench testing. Now, uh, I know that bench testing may not be the be all end all of motor performance, but I also know that flight testing is very, very subject to confirmation bias and placebo effect. So I'm giving these motors one last chance. I'm building three identical versions of this quadcopter, one of them with the latest version of the FPV Cycle Imperial 25 millimeter, one with the probably the best value 2207 motor you can get, the iFlight Zing 2. And this is a FPV cycle motor that is in prototyping that Bob asked me to test that I'm not supposed to say more about. So we're going to build three of these. We're going to try them. I maybe even do like a blind test where I don't know which one I'm flying. And uh, then I'll make a final decision. But where my head's at right now is that a 2207 motor, a really good quality 2207, or maybe a 2306.5, something in that size range, in the 33 or 34 grams range, is gonna give you the best performance and save you a fair amount of weight compared to a 25 millimeter motor weighing closer to 39 or 40 grams. The flight controller for this build is still the JBF7, but this time it is the JBF7 V2. We've updated the flight controller to a new version with a few improvements. Uh, for example, we finally have a USB-C plug. Isn't that nice? There are some diagnostic LEDs. Uh, it does have a barometer, and now it can run iNav if that's what you want. Uh, and it also has plugs on the bottom to make it, if you if you prefer to use plugs instead of soldering, you can swap the ES or the flight controller easier just by unplugging the peripherals and plugging the new flight controller in. I am switching to the V2 just because it's the latest and I should probably fly, you know, the latest on my own quad. Uh, I've got full release video for this flight controller if you want to know more details about what differentiates it from the V1. And the ESC has also changed. The original build used the iFlight Suxex ESC. They don't make it anymore. Now they've moved to the Blitz ESC. And this had me worried for a minute 
because I was worried that these little wings that stick out would interfere with the standoffs and not fit, but thankfully they do, just barely, clear. It looks like it's going to work just fine. Another thing about the Blitz ESC that is, uh, I'm not sure if it's a pro or a con. It has a capacitor mounted directly to the ESC. And uh, the advantage of this is that you theoretically don't need to mount a separate capacitor anywhere else on the quad. It's only 470 microfarads, but presumably iFlight knows what they're doing, inspected appropriately. Of course, you could solder an additional capacitor on if you wanted to, but I'm probably not going to and see how it works out. Now, this hangs down. It's a surface mount capacitor and it hangs down below the ESC. So depending on what frame you've got, that may or may not actually work. Thankfully, the QAVS has a convenient cutout that that capacitor can sit into. However, I am just waiting to see how long it is until that gets knocked off in a crash. It's fairly protected by the arms. Maybe it'll be okay. I know a lot of people who knock these off though and they have to solder a capacitor on. So yeah, some people, they just break it off and they solder a new one on. I probably won't do that. We'll see how it goes. Here's where we are in the build right now. I've got the ESC installed, I've got the motors installed and soldered up, and I have the Vista and the receiver sort of mounted but not quite fully installed. And you can see I've passed these zip ties through, but I haven't actually uh, zipped them down. I've decided to try running the wire between the video transmitter and the camera through this slot in the bottom of the frame. It just comes out the bottom plate here and through the the two split deck uh, plates and comes out underneath the ESC here. My motivation for this is that sometimes that wire gets squished up in there between the ESC and the flight controller. And I, it's never been an issue, but I kind of don't like it. It's not great to have wires running across the top of the flight controller where they can touch the gyro. Sometimes that can create issues and sometimes uh, I just worry it'll get damaged. I, I kind of worry it's gonna get damaged anyway because you can see here it's coming out the bottom and anything that comes out the bottom plate is ripe to get damaged, but it is tucked up into this little area here where the arms maybe will protect it. We're gonna see how it goes. I'm gonna give it a try. Another major change is the receiver that I'm using. Yes, I am switching to Express LRS for my daily builds. I haven't done that before. Well, hang on, let's back up. Why am I not using Crossfire? Crossfire is great. I just like the more advanced stuff that is being done by protocols like Ghost and Express LRS. Higher frequency, lower latency, just cool innovation and so forth. And I was using Ghost before, and I still think Ghost is great, but Express LRS can do pretty much everything Ghost can do, and more, and it can go up to one watt. So if I want more output power, I can take my Express LRS uh, module and transmit at one watt and get all the range I could possibly want, whereas Ghost maxes out at 350 milliwatts. But mostly I just kind of like the fun things that Express LRS is doing. I've gotten comfortable with how to set up an Express LRS receiver and a module. It's quick, it's no longer inconvenient for me, and it's just where I want to be. So this receiver is the Happy Model uh, EP1 receiver with uh, external antenna. We're going to be mounting that. Uh, I don't want to use the EP2 receiver with the, with the ceramic antenna because of the reduction in range and because it wouldn't fit well in this low profile build. Another thing that I'm doing differently relates to the flight controller. So the JBF7 V2 flight controller has plugs for all of its major connections. And I'm not afraid of soldering, but I've decided to give a try with plugs and see how it works out for me. So I have got plugs soldered up for the receiver and for the DJI video transmitter. And that literally will be a no solder install. The ESC, the receiver, the video transmitter will plug in and that's it. Okay, well I had to solder the plugs onto the video transmitter and the receiver, so it's not technically no solder. But if I needed to replace a receiver or if I needed to replace a flight controller, I could just pop it out, pop it back in. We'll see if that turns out to be a mistake. Well, and of course you guys want to see it fly, so I'm going to just rip one pack here for you. It's getting dark and it's probably not going to be like the best freestyle pack you ever saw, but can't put a video up like this without giving you at least a little flight footage. Let's do it.
<laughs> well, that'll do. If you want a full build tutorial for almost this exact quad, including all the steps you need to put it together, to configure it in Betaflight, every single thing, uh, check out my perfect freestyle build tutorial. Uh, I'll put a link down in the video description and I'll put an updated parts list in the video description as well if you want to pick up the newer parts. The actual steps for putting it together are basically the same. It's just there's slightly different parts. Um, that's going to do it for this video though. Thank you so much for watching and happy flying. Woo! It does fly. It flies good. Flies good. I'm so relieved every time I freaking finish a build and go fly it, and there's not some BS thing wrong with it. And it's like going, bah, 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 and you're like, why is it doing that? I just built it. It's perfect. That never happens to me, of course. 